Ottawa Christian School, you, you saw that little uh, snapshot at the beginning uh, that the Ottawa Christian School Association was founded in 1956. It took about eight years to get the school off the ground. Um, but Ottawa Christian School was founded by members of the Christian community who uh, said, you know what, we're raising our children to be followers of Jesus Christ at home. We're bringing them to church to become part of the worshiping community, part of the tangible body of Christ. Uh, to these people, it just made eminently good sense that um, for the uh, uh, six or seven hours a day the students were in an academic setting, that that reinforced what's happening at home and at church. Uh, so the whole idea behind Ottawa Christian School is that the school would come along uh, side parents and work with parents and churches uh, to raise the next generation to be followers of Jesus Christ, to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And uh, for these people who founded Ottawa Christian School and for us today, I think there really are uh, three uh, key things that make Ottawa Christian School a distinctly Christian school. The first is that we are um, uh, always working very hard to make sure that we are developing a Christian atmosphere. We want to be a Christian community of learning. And there's, there's really two aspects of that. The first aspect is that we want to um, carry on a worshipful uh, community, um, a, a praying community, so that um, just like it would be normal for you to pray with your children at home, that's normal for us to do at the school. We punctuate the day with prayer, typically at the beginning of the day, at lunchtime, and at the end of the day. Um, uh, and we have we have a chapel service once a week as well. Last year it was on Wednesdays, um, and that was just a time for the whole school to get together and to worship God. Uh, we would have announcements there as well, but the real the, the focus of that was keeping a relationship with our Lord alive. So that's the one aspect of the of the Christian atmosphere, uh, and that is how we keep our relationship to God um, uh, alive. The second aspect is uh, how we treat each other. And we are constantly working with the students and with ourselves. That's part of growing in Christ all the time. But constantly recognizing that each and every individual that we come across, every human being that we come across, is made in the image of God and is dearly loved by God. Therefore, they deserve high honor and respect. So we are trying to work that out um, in the school. Uh, and, you know, in some ways at school, that's easier to do than at home. Uh, we can formalize things a little bit more. Uh, at home, the kids just sort of, uh, it's a place just to, uh, to let go and to hang out. But at school, we formalize things like, uh, well, it's quiet in the hall. And um, while there may be some things that are good about having children traveling down the hall quietly, it, it creates a sense of discipline. But more than that, it's also a conscious awareness that you are deferring to other people's needs so that when the children are walking down the hall and they're quiet, it's because, oh, maybe the grade five class is writing a math test. Uh, as you come down the stairs and you come into the lobby, we have to be quiet because Mrs. Hunter may be on the phone with someone. So we have to honor that calling that she has at that time. So there is this sense that we are deferring to other people, that we are conscious of other people's needs uh, and, and that's why we emphasize politeness as well. Please and thank you are just those um, things that we say to, to show respect, to defer to other people, and then to show gratitude to other people as well. We make a big deal. I make a big deal about holding the door open for the students. Uh, it's just a, a way of honoring them, and they reciprocate that. So all these aspects, and even, on, even in the um, uh, sports, we think of... Uh, uh, sportsmanship as uh, simply uh, godliness on the playing field. Uh, and so all those key things about sportsmanship that you're trying to teach the students, we will emphasize that as well. Uh, so all that is just to create a Christian atmosphere in the school. Now, the second thing that makes Ottawa Christian School a Christian school is that we teach the children the story of the Bible. And I use that word story on purpose, uh, not because the Bible is fictional, it's God's true story of the world to us, um, but it does come to us in a grand story format, uh, all the way from creation to uh, the new creation. You see the unfolding of God's story, and then where we fit into that story too. So the people of Israelite, uh, the people of Israel 
we're part of God's story, and now we move to the New Testament time. Christ ascends. He calls all his disciples to make to make disciples of all nations. And that's the time we find ourselves in now. And that's the time uh, that we that the children receive their call as well. You now get to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. You get to be his hands and feet in the world. In a, in a sense, you get to, with your very life, re, re, uh, write redemption history. Um, and we think that's a fabulous story that, and that needs to be deeply rooted in the students' hearts. So that, so that they can live out that story in a world where there are other challenging stories. Um, and we're not going to hide those from the kids as well. Uh, they need to know that this is God's beautiful world, his wonderful world, but it's also broken. Um, and uh, part of that brokenness is that there are stories that compete with the biblical story, uh, but also that... Uh, they compete with the biblical story in our own hearts as well. And so we need to be constantly growing in, in holiness before the face of God. So, so that's, you know, uh, when a child starts in kindergarten and they go through grade eight, they will have uh, seen the scope of that biblical story two or three times in their educational career. Um, and of course, we, we, we start off storytelling in the younger grades. And of course, there are some stories in the younger grades that are not fit to be told to kindergartners, but we'll touch on them later as well. And we'll get more in depth in our biblical teaching. Uh, but in, they will get that sense of the full scope of that biblical story over their uh, school career. So that's the second thing that makes Ottawa Christian School a Christian school. It's a school that has the Bible at the center of it as well. But the third thing that makes OCS a distinctly Christian school is that understanding of the biblical story flows into the other subject areas. It doesn't stop at Bible class. It's not like we have religious class and then secular studies. It doesn't work that way. So, for example, if we're studying geography with the children, we're studying about God's wonderful, diverse, fascinating creation. Um, and that, that's in its physical variety, but also in its cultural variety. Um, and so we want to delight with the children in sharing that very good uh, goodness of creation with them. But we're also, and this is where some of the hard work in, in something like geography studies comes in, is we're, we recognize that it's also a broken world. And we see that in the various cultures, including our own. Um, and we. Um, we also want to see, okay, so uh, God has placed us in this part of his world. How can we faithfully live out care for his creation and his creatures, especially his image bearers in this world? So you can understand how that biblical uh, worldview works its way into the other subject areas. There are some subjects that it's not quite as um, um, explicit. For example, math. You know, two plus two is four, whether you're a Christian or a Muslim or an atheist. Uh, however, when we're studying math, we, what we are studying is patterns in God's creation. Uh, and we'll, we'll use that language with the students as well. But an overarching perspectival um, uh, idea that we have is that all this learning that we are doing, uh, including the study of math, including the study of geography, language arts, all this, what's its purpose? Its purpose is a training uh, of the gifts that we have, developing those gifts that God has given us um, to their maximum potential so that we can use those gifts to serve God and to serve other people. Because ultimately, that's our goal is discipleship, right? To lead the children in the way of Christ so that they will follow him in whatever calling God has on, on our children. So that, in a nutshell, uh, very briefly, is what makes Ottawa Christian School a uniquely Christian school. Um, so uh, we have, of course, all the usual subjects that any school has, um, but we also place a premium on uh, some other things as well. We have a, a robust music program at Ottawa Christian School. I can't imagine Christian education without a music program, without choir. Um, th these are wonderful things uh, uh, that students can learn. Instruments, but also learn to use their voices and train their voices to read music so that they can express 
joy, delight, and praise for God. Um, we have a, a robust uh, phys ed program. We have a sp phys ed specialist teacher who teaches from grades four to grade eight, Mr. McGregor. He's done a fabulous job, job bringing that uh, tightly together, that program. Um, we have an art program as well. Mrs. Nickerson runs our art program, and she does uh, art grades. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Naftel, four to eight. Four to eight, yes, that's what I thought. Grades four to eight. Um, so you saw that art room. It serves as a science room as well. Uh, you can set up labs there, but that art room as well. And then we've got a learning support room as well. And that learning support room serves multiple functions. Um, and so it does serve to um, perhaps bridge gaps that students might have in learning. It uh, serves to work with students with uh, specific learning disabilities that they might have. Um, and it also serves a, a sort of emotional um, uh, uh, spot where sometimes kids, uh, for all kinds of reasons, might need a chill out place. Or Maybe uh, there are children uh, who have ants in their pants, as we used to say, and they just need a, a time to um, jump on the trampoline for a little while. Um, I've, I've known students who have needed that, uh, you know, two or three minutes jumping on that trampoline, get the cardio up, and they're good to go for another half hour or hour. So it's nice to bridge that time. So Mrs. Naftel and her learning support team do fabulous things uh, there with the students. So that gives you a sense uh, of the program. We, we have some extracurricular events too. There's some sporting stuff that the kids do. And when we meet uh, at a registration meeting, I can talk to you a little bit more about that. Um, uh, yeah, I think that uh, unless there's something else that I'm missing, I think that covers what we do a musical every second year. That's a fabulous extracurricular. Or in, it's part of our curriculum, but we do it uh, also, uh, the presentation is to the community off, off school hours. So that's a wonderful thing as well. Yeah. So that's the um, uh, academic offerings that we have. Now, everybody is wondering, okay, so what's going to happen next year? And that's a very good question. <laughs> so we had uh, an announcement on um, uh, uh, Friday from the provincial government and the provincial government basically said uh, you know what you've got to think of having you've got to have three plans in place a plan for full online learning uh, a plan for blended learning and a plan for uh, all the school all the children in the school with all, with a number of protocols in place so we're working on that right now um, and uh, we will be able to uh, deliver any, any of those um, kinds of education. Um, but uh, we're hoping and we're praying um, that uh, in September, September 8th, when we start, that we'll be able to have all the kids in the school. We might not be able to do all, do all the things that we typically expected to do on a, on a typical year, but we would love to have all the kids in, in school. And that's our primary planning right now uh, for, for that eventuality. Um, but we'll just have to see uh, how this works, this uh, um, virus seems to have its own way of working and we're just discovering things about it. Um, it could very well be that we start the year with all the students in the school and then we have to go to some sort of different scenario. Um, we're hoping that's not going to happen, um, but uh, we'll, we'll know later in the summer uh, what that's going to look like. The provincial government is gonna give us more guidance at that point in time as well. And we'll be able to tailor some things unique to Ottawa Christian School as well. So we're, we're, we'll be given suggestions as well as directions. Okay. Um, now, in terms of uh, some of you, I think I've met. I, I think I heard some familiar names there. Uh, so some of you, I think I've met uh, on a registration meeting. But the next steps would be, if you are really interested in, in uh, enrolling for September uh, uh, 20, then uh, the next step would be to meet with me. Mrs. Dawson would uh, arrange that, uh, and at this point in time, we'll do it Zoom. But we could do it a little more intimately, just one or two of us meeting uh, each other, and then we'd have a lot more time as well. I could unpack a little bit more about what it means uh, uh, that we're a Christian school. I could talk uh, with a greater detail about um, 
uh, you know, the academic offerings at Ottawa Christian School and answer any questions that you might have. So um, that would be the step uh, after this. Um, and then um, you could uh, uh, start the registration process. We will be getting, we'll be able to give you feedback on that. Uh, if you have questions about that registration process, we can give you information about that and, and walk you through that process. Uh, we'll also be communicating with you over the summer if you've registered. We will, Mrs. Dawson, even if you haven't registered, Mrs. Dawson will be connecting with you uh, over the summer. But if you've registered, you will get specific pieces of information from us. Uh, you'll get a school calendar. Of course, you'll be, uh, uh, we'll let you know what's going to happen in September very specifically. Um, uh, we'll give you a school calendar, um, uh, the, uh, all the supplies you need to bring, uh, your, your child needs to bring to the school to start off in September. So those kinds of things we'll be communicating with you. And if we can, we do not know whether we can do this yet or not, but we would love to have a new parent orientation meeting at the end of the, su uh, at the, end of the summer. I believe that we've got that scheduled for September 1st, tentatively, Mrs. Dawson. That's the Tuesday before. Uh, did I catch you off guard about that? You did, you did, and I don't have it in front of me. It is typically the Tuesday, or Monday, I think it's the Monday night before. Okay, so maybe yeah. it's August 31st, but we'll- But we'll, we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll give, be giving you an information, uh, a letter about that as well, uh, if we're able to do that. And if not, then maybe we can do some sort of uh, Zoom thing. Yeah, so, so that's where we would go from here. Over to you, Mrs. Dawson. All right, thank you. Um, we, uh, I'm just going to show you a two-minute video, um, just some testimonials from some parents, four different families um, from over the years. When kids get to a certain age, they spend more of their waking time at school than they do anywhere else. And so it is absolutely critical that the school is able to be on the same page as the family and the church in nurturing our children and sowing into them really the Word of God and the Christian perspective. When we first uh, went to research the school, I met Paul Treemstra. Obviously, we talked about the Christian nature of the school and the rest, but very quickly, I turned the conversation to curriculum and said, can you talk about curriculum? I was so impressed. He had literally the binders all behind his desk there in his office, started pulling out the binders and saying, so what grades are your kids in? Pulling out examples, walking through. And I realized, okay, instantly, here's what we're looking for. A school that can bring together faith, but also a clear commitment to strong academics. We actually are a community, like everyone's involved. You know, it, it, it really does take a community to raise children properly. And, and I, I see that at Ottawa Christian School. I think because Christ is a part of all of what we do, there's a deeper relationship that, that grows with, with each passing year. The teachers at Ottawa Christian School are absolutely amazing. Just the care, whenever you go there, you can just tell that the teachers, mm -hmm. they care for the kids and they love them. Our kids are growing. Um, our kids are being challenged and encouraged as they need to be. So we're really, really pleased. What I really desire for them is to be followers of Jesus, to have that, that strong foundation so that they will at one point make that choice that that's what they, they want to live for him and um, be a disciple. We're equipping them because if we do not equip them with the right tools, somebody else will equip them. And we wanted to put them in a position where we could see that the right tools were placed in their hands and they could go for it. And by the grace of God, we put them in God's hands because that's where really we all belong. Uh, yeah. So we have some questions, Mr. T. Excellent. All right. So um, some of the questions that came in a little earlier was, uh, what denomination is Ottawa Christian School? Yeah, it's a good question. So we are not associated with any particular church or denomination. We are an interdenominational Christian school. If you've received our information package, you will uh, find in there the Constitution of Ottawa Christian School. It, there's no question about it where we're, the perspective that we're coming from. We are coming from the Protestant perspective. We are a Protestant Christian school. We make no bones about it. That's where we're coming from. 
However, um, we have found that Christians from a wide variety of di different traditions and denominations have found Ottawa Christian School to be a hospitable place. Um, so even though we're coming from a, a, a Protestant perspective, we welcome people from Catholic and Eastern Orthodox traditions as well. So, um, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, we're a Protestant Christian school, but hospitable. And uh, we want to welcome Christians, anybody who wants their child to be, or their children to be raised as followers of Jesus Christ. Awesome. Uh, Talita's daughter is asking, uh, what does recess typically look like for grade four kids? Oh, okay. Well, for grade four kids, it would probably look like very similar to many other kids. We have two recess times scheduled in the day. They're both 25 minute periods. The one um, it starts at 1020 and the students go out for recess and they play. We've got a little bit of blacktop there. We've got all kinds of fields. There's some wonderful play structures at the school. Uh, so kids would do a variety of different things. In the wintertime, of course, there's all kinds of snow that uh, people uh, use to build uh, forts and paths and all kinds of interesting things. Um, so uh, there's a wide variety of activities. In the wintertime, Mr. McGregor, our phys ed teacher, also uh, runs some intramurals. And so students then can sign up for intramurals. They could do stuff like European handball, floor hockey, all kinds of different, uh, different sports in the gym um, at that point in time. Um, and then after recess, that's when you have your snack time. We, we used to have snack time before recess. We found that actually the students eat better after recess, after they've done some running around. Uh, so that's when we have our... Uh, are a snack time. Some people have their lunch at 10.45 when they come in from recess, and then they have their snack at uh, 1.10 when they come in from that recess. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it depends on how hungry they are early in the morning. Awesome. And maybe um, we can put Mrs. Naftel on the spot here and ask her a few questions. So, sure. uh, all right, uh, Mrs. Naftel, so any field trips for grade six and up, like biking, camping, or out of town? So typically our grade five class does an overnight trip to um, Upper Canada Village. Um, we've got some traditions of the grade six class going skating on the canal, things like that. But it's really in grade seven and eight where we've gone on some uh, some different trips. They've gone to Montreal one year, and then the next year they've typically gone to Camp Iowa to do some team building and challenges like that. So we do have some overnight trips typically in grade seven and eight, and then again, that one in grade five. Um, they have class trips throughout the year, um, all the classes do, um, to places like in kindergarten, we'd go to the fire station and Valley View Animal Farms, and they do some um, outdoor education opportunities too, where they go to, to a local um, forest and they kind of discover what's in that forest and just play and just kind of be in nature. And then teachers intentionally do those kind of things, trying to connect it with the curriculum as much as possible as well. Awesome. And is there a lunch program? We do have, um, we, like we've typically, we've had a pizza day, a sub day, and we have a milk and juice program but the, the students eat their lunch in the classroom. So those would be delivered to their classroom as part of their lunch. And not everyone participates in it. It's a, a, on a family basis that way. Wonderful. Um, what kind of handwriting do kids learn? Do they do cursive or print or? So we do, we do teach them to print properly as much as we can. They like to develop their own method of printing even at the age of five, but we try to train them to do it in, in the proper way and show that doing it that way will force good habits and make their printing neater. In grade two, we introduce cursive writing and we focus on that until about grade six. And then in grade seven and eight, they have all the skills to know how to write and read in cursive. And then we kind of be a little bit more flexible in letting them have their own blend of taking notes that of their own kind of personal cursive because cursive can be, um, a, yeah, it can be very individual. If we look at all of our handwriting, I'm sure it's individual, but they do know how to properly form the letters to make it look like teacher perfect. Not everyone, but that's the goal. <laughs> um, 
is, uh, let me see, how long is each class period? And how many so periods in a school day? Sorry. So we've, we've broken up the school day into three, three main chunks. So they have devotions, then they have 100 minutes of learning, then you have um, recess, nutrition break, 100 minutes of learning, recess, nutrition break, 100 minutes of learning. Now those classes are divided into 25 minute segments. So older students may be in the same class, like a class like art for 75 minutes straight. Um, younger elementary and primary would more have 25 minute blocks. So like a grade two typical day would be, they'd have devotions and then that teacher often takes them to the gym every day for 25 minutes. They've had their chance to share, then they get their energy out and then they get a good chunk of learning where they do mostly language arts and math and then they have recess. So they might be a 25 minute block, it might be a 50 minute block depending on the activity, but the day is scheduled in that way. Awesome. And um, when we're speaking, when, when we connect, if you would like a class schedule, I'm happy to send that to you as well. So just let me know. Um, is the recess period staggered throughout the different grades? Right now, it is not. Um, due to COVID, we may have to be a little bit more uh, flexible in that and have um, different recesses. The JK and SK typically start out in their own kindergarten and JK stays there for the most of the year, if not all of the year. Senior kindergarten likes to interact with the older students. They start to form relationships, they've got siblings, so they are allowed out of the kindergarten area um, to, to join the rest of the school. We do sometimes, um, so we have a hockey, we have a little pad there that they play hockey on. We'll have a schedule there of grades so that sometimes the grades can play together but if they want to have a little bit more of an intense hockey game you don't want someone to get hurt so then um, that would be designated for them but it is an opportunity for the whole school community to connect and it has worked quite well we find we've got um, a leadership team in grade five or six um, of students that that volunteer to go into the kindergarten area and just interact with the kids, make sure they're having safe play. If they're not engaged, try to engage them in, in play and keep them safe and, and just to have that connection with them. So we do like to foster relationships between other grades. So as long as we're allowed to do that, we'll keep doing that. And even if we go to split recesses, we may have grade one and three and five out at the same time, depending on numbers. We'll have to be creative about that. Um, this a library question. Um, so I've got a couple more questions for Mrs. Neftal and then we'll go back to Mr. Uh, Trinstra. Um, it's moving around here. Okay, yeah, could the students borrow books from the library? Yes, but they need to return the books to the library. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so they, they, they typically go to the library and they can take two books out at a time and there can be exceptions if there's a project that they're working on. Um, the classroom teacher will often take out books that fit their theme and bring them to the class for everyone to share, but there's two books that they can take home with them every, every week. Uh, thank you. Does the student stay in the class for the whole day or do they move classes? Again, typically um, students in the older grades have moved classes, so in grades seven and eight, and grades six and under has basically stayed in their class. The exception would be everyone went to the music room and most students go to the art room. Sometimes we have scientists in schools come and they will do a presentation and then they'll use the art room science lab because that's a better space for that. Of course they have gym in the gym um, but the teachers typically rotate and there's not as much rotation in the, the lower ends anyways but in grades seven and eight it's more of a middle school model and um, the students students sometimes rotate, sometimes the teachers rotate, depending on, on the subject. Awesome. Uh, do you teach drums in your music program? Yes. That was an yeah. easy answer. They have every, <laughs> yeah. well, well, my own son loves to play drums, so he plays drums for, um, for choir sometimes and has really enjoyed that. So yeah, there's drums, percussion, we've got uh, um, violins and ukuleles and, uh, what are the glockenspiels, the little keyboard, the little thingy things? I'm not the music teacher, obviously. <laughs> and um, xylophones, and then, I think. Yeah, no, it wasn't xylophones. You know what they, they get those? I think they're glockenspiels. Anyways, and also in grade seven and eight, there's a lot of brass instruments as well. But um, 
yeah, they've had drums and guitars and, and uh, yeah, the violins was new this past year and that was very successful. Awesome. Um, oh, and maybe want to just touch on chapel, then the grade sevens and eights and worship, typically. Right. So, <laughs> so we like to have um, as much as possible the students running the leadership that they can. So like I was mentioning before, having a team go out and help supervise the JKSK classes. So in chapel, we have, um, we have leadership teams that are in charge of the AV, setting up the mics, making sure the, um, the, um, the slides all, they're not slides, the, the PowerPoint works so that we can read the music. And then we have teams that will lead the actions, play the music, sing, even making announcements. So we try to get the students involved, always under the leadership of teachers as well. Um, so that chapel, it just becomes more meaningful for everyone. Um, and students tend to like to listen to other students. They've put on plays, things like that. But really it, it gives them that chance to lead worship in grade seven and eight is when when they do more of that leadership awesome thank you so mr t will bring you back in the spotlight and uh just a few more questions some great questions here um okay this this is um very important what what food are kids allowed to bring or not <laughs> <laughs> yes the only thing you are not allowed to bring are peanuts or peanut products or anything that says there is there are peanuts in the product. Um, so uh, occasionally you have products that say may or may not contain peanut products. That is really just uh, the companies making sure that they are uh, covered in terms of liability. We do not say that you, so if a granola bar does not have peanuts in it, but there's a little label on there saying may or may not contain peanuts, you may bring that to the school. Yeah, so it's really the only thing you cannot bring is any peanut or peanut products. Thank you. How many students per class? It really does depend. Um, so, uh, this year we, uh, probably averaged about 20 or 21 students per class. Uh, we did have a class of 26 in grade five. I think that was our biggest class. We've had class cohorts larger. Our grade eight class next year looks to be somewhere between 30 and 35, but that will be broken up. That won't be a single class. Our largest class size we will have is 28. Um, and if we go, we, we have different, we, we have a sort of a soft cap for a classroom, we'll go up to a certain point. And then if we need more support in that class, we'll bring in some EA support in that class so that we can, we can grow the class a little more. But then the teacher needs to have that extra support. Thank you. And is it only one class per grade? So uh, most of the time that's the case. However, this year, since we had so many grade sevens and really quite a large grade eight class, we had 28 grade eight students, which is our maximum size at the beginning of the year. We didn't want to close off enrollment to grade eight. And we had, I believe it was 33 grade sevens or 35 grade sevens, something like that. So what we did is we had three, seven, eight classes and that worked really well. Um, so we, we've done that. Um, and sometimes uh, there, there have been a, that, that same grade seven class was, or the grade eight, the current grade, or our graduating grade eight class, they were, we had a grade four and a five, four combination one time because they were uh, that size that they needed, we needed more, uh, more space for them. So we will do combined classes um, and that can work extremely well. Uh, we typically make those uh, combined classes a little bit smaller than the uh, other classes, but uh, yeah, uh, so, whether, whether classes grow or shrink, it's a normal thing for uh, schools to have uh, some grades combined. That, that's not unusual, and uh, we can tailor those um, you know, socially um, and make sure that uh, students' learning needs are well taken care of in those classes. Wonderful. Uh, how is OCS funded? OCS is funded by uh, rental, uh, contributions through tuition, but also through uh, support through fundraising and members who donate on a regular basis. The other thing to recognize is that we um, have 
a wonderful facility. Uh, and when we purchased that facility uh, and uh, bought the land, built the building on it, that was a $7 million project. But we only had a $1.5 million mortgage. So that was $5.5 million of capital from previous generations. And we are incredibly thankful for that. Um, so th those are people who paid it forward, right? And uh, so that's just wonderful that we have that. We do have some churches that contribute to Ottawa Christian School as well. Um, and uh, it, the more contributions we have outside, uh, outside the parental tuition, the better it is for everyone. Awesome. And how many branches of OCS are there? How many, sorry? Branches. How oh, many? We have, yeah. yeah, we have one, one campus. Uh, at 255 Tartan Drive. Awesome. We, right. we, are, we are a member of a larger uh, Christian education association called Advanced Christian Schools. That, I think, is up to 80 or 90 Christian schools across Ontario. So we get a lot of support from them. Awesome. Uh, okay, I'm just going through the questions. Do kids have access to a microwave? Back on the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty important, it especially is. when you're 12 or 13 years old and, and growing like a weed. Yeah, so uh, maybe Mr. Stas can, can answer this one a little better, but uh, we, we have typically had some microwaves in the older grades. Uh, yeah, that's right. So <clears throat> there are um, common spaces between rooms upstairs, uh, little activity rooms that both have access to, and often a microwave will be... Uh, uh, deployed in those activity rooms and then um, you get your regular users and if there gets to be overuse in long lineups we need to create uh, schedules around that um, but we we tend to work it out and uh, yeah in grade seven and eight you tend to have tend to have access to a microwave awesome uh, typical class size for junior kindergarten and kindergarten and senior kindergarten yeah so uh, again, it really does depend. We have a, ver a variety of options that we've offered in the past in terms of kindergarten. Um, and uh, so uh, some of the junior kindergarten classes tend to be a little smaller. Not everyone sends their kids to junior kindergarten. So this year, uh, Mrs. Napel, you can correct me, but uh, we had a junior kindergarten class that was really quite small, about eight or so students. Uh, and then we had a JKSK combined that was a little larger, but those, uh, ended up being around 16 in a class. Is that correct, Mrs. Naftel? Yes, that's correct. And I think the largest we've ever gone, and that was with full-time EA support, is about 23. Yeah. And with the configurations we have now, they, they tend to be around 16. Wonderful. For music, do all kids learn all instruments, or do they get to pick, and how does that work? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, uh, no, not all students learn all instruments. What we have tended to do is um, uh, by grade. So the violins, for example, which we use this year, uh, we, we deployed those in grade six. Uh, the ukulele, I'm pretty sure, was in grade five this year. Four. Okay, in four this year. Oh, no, no, yeah. you're right, five. No, it you're was right. five. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, five this year. So five was ukuleles. Uh, the glockenspiels tend to be used for the younger kids, that percussion stuff, um, uh, younger grades. Um, and uh, uh, we were going to do some uh, um, bucket drumming. I think that was on the schedule too before we had the, the COVID break. So uh, that's always a blast to see that. And then the older grades, um, like Mrs. Naftel said, we've got the full range of band instruments. So typically a student would pick one in grade seven and would largely carry over that instrument for two years. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes, for example, a brass instrument, the student can't get the embouchure for that, so they might have to switch to something else. Um, and sometimes students uh, you know, excel at, at, at a certain instrument, um, uh, and then they might branch out to the saxophone. It might be a little more of a challenge for them. Yeah. So the brass and the reed instruments in grades seven and eight, typically, but also some, uh, some drumming. Uh, some kids just, it's the percussion that really gets them going. Mm -hmm. uh, three more questions. Uh, do kids who finish OCS and move on to Redeemer High School have a special discount there? And is there a partnership between both schools? Yeah, so yes to both those questions. And I'll just be a little more specific. 
we do have a relationship with Redeemer Christian High School. They are a different Christian school association, but we are so intimately tied. They're, in, they're at um, a sister school of Ottawa Christian School. They belong to that advanced Christian schools as well. And we do give a 25% discount at our end, a um, 25% uh, discount down to the minimum. When you take a look at the registration forms, you'll see there's a minimum and a maximum. Um, so we will bring, uh, let's say if you're, if you're paying um, $12,000 uh, for tuition at Ottawa Christian School, and you've got one going to Redeemer High School, we'll take a 25% uh, uh, discount at OCS, and at Redeemer, they will do the same thing as well. So it's, uh, you're not doubling your tuition then when you send your kid on to high school. Is there homework every day? It depends on the class. It also depends on the student. Um, so uh, we do have a, a basic uh, guideline for homework uh, for the younger grades, grade one in particular. It's, it's often just take home readers, snuggle with mom and dad and, and, and read the books. Um, uh, it, it, we've also got this program called Raz Kids that we use as a reading program in the, in the primary grades. And that, that's done typically at home as well. Uh, and that's fantastic that kids can do some reading, uh, read some books, and then they will do some tests on those books on that uh, program. It records all kinds of information from the, for the teacher. That's fantastic. Um, and then, you know, quite often as the students go up in grades, there might be math assignments that need to be carried over. There are projects that need to be completed as well. Not all of that can be done in class. Although you do have students that are incredibly efficient in class. And uh, so they often get the work done in class, whereas other students are taking it home. But we look for a certain range um, and we may have to adapt that to certain students as well. So by the time the students are in grade eight, it's not unusual for them to be getting about 45 minutes to an hour of homework a day, four days a week. So there's a rough, average uh, for the students. And of course, some students procrastinate. And so then they might not have 15, they might say, oh, I don't have any homework, but there's this project coming up. So then they, uh, they bunch it all up into a weekend. And uh, uh, maybe, maybe they're learning that uh, they work best under pressure, but we would, we would just assume that they space that out better. Great. I know I said three more, but they're, they're popping up a few more here. Wow. So we'll, we'll go to nine o'clock because that's kind of what we said. I'd like to honor um, for everybody's time. Uh, okay. So does the school have fundraising activities uh, about how many each year in the school? Yeah, good question. So we do, uh, we do have fundraising activities. First of all, for Ottawa Christian School, we, uh, you know, walkathons are something back from the 1970s, 60s, and 70s, but we have a walkathon annually at Ottawa Christian School. We're actually planning on having two walkathons this coming year. Um, and uh, that is the single biggest fundraiser for Ottawa Christian School. Typically, we get anywhere between sixty and $70,000 a year through the walkathon. It's, and, you know, it's a fundraiser, but it's just a lot of fun, too. Uh, we walk 10 kilometers or jog 10 kilometers, and uh, it's a real wonderful community event. Um, so we, we have a good time there as well. Uh, but we do have uh, uh, other fundraisers for Ottawa Christian School, like you can buy gift cards through Ottawa Christian School and the school gets a little bit of that. And then if you, if you buy $100 worth of grocery coupons, for example, the school might get 5% uh, of that, but, um, but it's, it's still, it's $100 for you. It's like bringing cash into the store. So uh, we do those uh, as well. But we do have a couple of fundraisers for outside the school also. We have a long relationship. I think it's now about 30 to 40 year long relationship with the Ottawa Mission. And um, we typically collect items. Uh, so they might say, you know what, we're short on toiletries this year. Ottawa Christian School, can you have your students bring in toiletry items? Uh, and then we might uh, also bring in a loony or toony along with that so we can bring that money and those uh, those things to uh, to the mission to help the people out uh, who are who they're working with uh, on the streets in Ottawa we we love it when um, it's something that's intentional the students really take it seriously 
Uh, so they, they earn the loony or toony that they bring in or they earn the money to buy uh, the deodorant or the socks or whatever is needed. Something really intentional like that. The other annual uh, fundraiser that we have is for a Christian school in Nairobi, Kenya. It's called Sud Academy, and it's established for refugees from uh, the South Sudan in Kenya. Um, uh, they don't get funding for education, so those refugees would get no education unless these independent schools uh, educate them. So we support them. I think this year we, we sent them a check for $4,700. And uh, this is another uh, um, lunch day. Uh, we have um, uh, hot dogs that we sell. Um, and uh, so uh, there, there's another day that you don't have to provide a lunch for the kids. But uh, then, then the proceeds for that go, go to uh, Sud Academy. Wonderful. Uh, we, can I jump in there? Yeah, we only yeah. do, I, I just don't want people to think we give them hot dogs every week. We do that for about six weeks because you can yeah, only eat so hot dogs for about six weeks in a year. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there a school bus? So we do have uh, a school bus. Um, well, it's not ours. We, uh, we're in, uh, we have an agreement uh, uh, with uh, a bus company. And that picks up students starting in Stittsville area. It comes through Stittsville, weaves its way through Canada, comes down uh, through the west side of Barhaven, comes to Ottawa Christian School, drops student off, students off at about five to eight, and then moves from Ottawa Christian School on to Redeemer Christian High School. In the afternoon, that bus gets reversed. It starts at Redeemer High School at around 3.05 or 3.10 comes to Ottawa Christian School, and, uh, and then it basically makes the, the same route back to Stittsville, roughly. Yeah, there is an extra charge for that. Um, that's not part of the tuition. Thank you. And last question um, has to do with after school programs, um, sports programs after school, uh, practice hours, frequency during the week. Yeah. So we do, we have been working with uh, uh, My Gym Ottawa for an after school program that ran all last year and we're looking forward to that running this year as well. Um, uh, so that's something that parents can opt into. Uh, again, um, that's paid for by the parents, it's not paid for by the school. Um, but in terms of practices for grades, really the practices that we would have for the students would be grades five through eight. And oftentimes we do have those practices after school. Sometimes we have practices during the school day in, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, recess, but most often it's for an hour or an hour and a half after school. So it could be from 3.30 to 4.30 or 3.30 to 5 for uh, those practices. And that would be for soccer in grades five and six. It would be for uh, a soccer, and basketball and volleyball for grades seven and eight. And that would be, uh, that hour to hour and a half is uh, typically once a week. Yeah, once, once or twice a week. It depends on the, uh, it depends on the, because uh, it could be once a week if there's a game uh, in that week too. So, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you. That is, um, that are, that's all the questions. If you do have any other questions, uh, I will be in contact with you in the next couple of days and uh, we can connect as Mr. T said, um, and we call him Mr. T because it's easier than Treemstra. So you are welcome to call him Mr. T. That is what the children call him as well. And, um, I will be, again, I'll be in contact with you guys if you would like to set up an appointment, a registration meeting uh, with Mr. T. I'm happy to do that. Um, he is around for a couple of weeks and hoping to get away. We will yeah. see. Uh, but yeah, happy to do that. So I will be in touch. You guys, um, I believe everybody has my email address, v.dawson at ocschool.org. We've been in touch. So please feel free. I check that all of the time. Thank you again, everyone. I'm just gonna um, whoop, change our view. There we go. Uh, thank you so much for um, attending this evening, our first uh, virtual tour open house. And uh, it's just been a real joy to be with each of you. And I look forward to speaking with you. So good night, everybody. Bye-bye.